up pet people, my name is Lexia and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video I'm going to be doing a very requested video and that is how I set up my western hog nose enclosure. Um, it's not going to really be a step by step, I am going to go through the steps and show you what I did. I did have some issues with recording at first so some of the shots are just pictures and others are recordings. Anyway I'm going to do a little voiceover and show you guys exactly how I put together your favorite um well, it seems to be your favorite snake's enclosure, and that is Wilbur's enclosure, and we're just going to have fun and get right into it. So please keep watching. Okay, so getting right into it, as I said, I kind of took pictures of the beginning of it. Um, for example, the first image, as you can see here, is just the tank itself and what I used to clean it. As you can see, I have completely cleaned out the enclosure um, using a reptile safe glass cleaner. I love using this cleaner so much. I use it on my uh, crested gecko enclosure and all the glass for my other enclosures. I've had zero issues with it before and it's an enzyme cleaner. So like I said, it's very safe for your um, reptiles and or other animals. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. Anyway, moving on from that, um, I can also show you that on one side of the tank I do have a heat mat duct tape to the underside of it. I duct taped it there because I had taken it off of his old enclosure and it would not stick to the new one. So duct tape seems to work best and it doesn't melt or doesn't cause any issues. Of course, because it's heated, it will cause residue on the bottom of the enclosure once you do take off that other mat, but you really don't see the bottom of enclosures, so that's not an issue in my mind. Anyway, getting right into it, as I said in my Western Hognose Care Guide, hognoses need a very dry substrate. They don't need a whole lot of humidity. They don't really need any spikes in humidity at all. Therefore, I use aspen bedding. Aspen bedding is a great product. Um, you can also hear more about it in my substrate video. But I use aspen bedding in Wilbur's enclosure just because it's great for his tunneling, it's great for the low humidity, and it's just very aesthetically pleasing with the type of theme I'm putting for his enclosure. Moving on from the aspen bedding, I have two different hides that I'm going to be using. I am putting one hide on the warm side of the tank and one hide on the cooler side of the tank. Now this is good because as always you need to make sure that your snakes have a heat gradient that they can go on. They can choose to be on the warmer side or the cooler side. I definitely noticed that Wilbur um, varies back and forth between which ones he's in because I do live in a very warm climate and my room gets rather warm so the air temperature it, he really doesn't need a whole lot of extra heat. My room temperature is pretty Pretty good for what they require but he does have that extra heat mat that he can go lay on to help with digestion and things of that nature. Um, so I have the two hides. I have those on opposite sides of the tank. One on the warm side and one on the cool side. And then I'm just putting in some kind of deserty terrarium type uh, decorations because he since he is a western hognose I wanted to give it that kind of desert western red rocky feel. I know that sounds really weird but it just in my opinion it's way more aesthetically pleasing than shoving a whole bunch of um like rainforest decorations in there. I feel like the reptile should have an enclosure that kind of resembles where they're from. I don't know. Anyway, moving on from that, I stuck in some fake plants, a water dish, some rocks. I moved the rocks around quite a bit because I just couldn't figure out where I actually wanted them. Um, in the end, I think I ended up taking out one of the ones that I have in this video. But yeah, so that's just a quick little overview of how to throw together a western hognose enclosure. And I say throw together because they really don't require a whole lot of... Um, things. They require enrichment as all snakes do. They require a water bowl and two hides. Pretty much that's all you need for them. They don't require a UVB bulb so they're really really easy to take care of. You can have UVB and use that as a hot spot also but because I said because as I mentioned earlier I do have a heat mat I'm not going to be using UVB on his tank right now. In the winter I might but I do have my windows open a lot and I know that's not like direct UVB light but it is a light to where I can view him um, and they don't need it so I'm not going to put it on his tank as of right now. But yeah so I know it was a really quick video, I know it was short, here's the end product of the tank and we're going to get into the end product now.
so there was the end product of the tank. As I said, once again, this is a really short video. I was just kind of doing it on a whim right before I went to work. I wanted to show all you guys the enclosure that Will was in and that he's happy and healthy because... I have noticed a lot of people like videos with Wilbur in them a little bit more, so I decided I'll show you guys his enclosure, um, show you he's doing good, and I'll have more videos on him in the future, but this was just a little, here's where he lives, here's how to set up a Western Hog Nose enclosure. Um, I hope you guys learned something, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, I know it was short, but thank you for watching anyway, and I really appreciate all of your love and support. Can't wait to see you next time. Bye!